Hello Brawlers and welcome to my review of episode 23 of Armored Alliance. I'm Haru Ren. So spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Armored Alliance episode 23. The first part is Awesome Brawlers and Havoc. We recap from last episode where Adjit is taken by the security force after returning all the stolen art and the Awesome Brawlers decide to go battle. And then Havoc shows up on a unicycle. Oh, hello Awesome Brawlers! <laughs> stranger danger! Stranger danger! Havoc wants to challenge Dan to a game show thing and the purpose of this is to prove Dan is a super kid? What? I guess since Havoc is such a maniac, it's really hard to argue his logic. Dan's first challenge is spot the difference, which she fails miserably at. The correct answer is... The shop owner's necktie is a different color than usual. <laughs> what? Since he failed, one of the awesome brawlers are put to sleep. Aw oh man, why is Leah the first one to go? The next challenge, Dan has to find the Rowdy Reds, which, again, Dan fails miserably at, even with Drago's help. Good lord, how many triplets are part of this town's population? The real Rowdy Reds are right over there! Peekaboo! Holy cow, that animation. Failed to pass the challenge! Hold on! Huh? If they've been here the whole time, then he hasn't failed the challenge. Since the challenge was to bring the Rowdy Reds here, right? Okay, my friend, you got me. Damn, Winton pulling out the objection card. So after being saved by Winton's miraculous lawyer skills, they plead with Dan to take the next challenge seriously. Only for Dan to not take it seriously. And the next challenge is... Go and bring back a cloud. There, you wanted a cloud? I brought you back a cloud. This guy's name is Cloud. You didn't spe say specifically to bring you back the result of floating water drops and ice crystals. When then the lawyer gets put to sleep after Dan fails again. Um, you know, these challenges aren't very fun at all. You've basically been cheating this whole time. What? Come on, Dan, I think after the first challenge, this is clearly a think outside the box game. That's not cheating, that's just you not being able to think. Oh yeah, if Dan loses, the Awesome Brothers will be put to sleep forever. Did Havoc seriously just make a death threat? Okay, so before getting into the next episode, we actually got a more better view of what Havoc's character is like. He's clearly a maniac that wants to amuse himself, and he's sadistic making Dan go through all these tricky challenges. He's kind of reminds me of the Joker, kind of? This is actually a great formal introduction to our main heroes of the main villain, since the Awesome Brothers never met Havoc before. The next part is First Fusion, Drago and Treacherous. Wow, okay, spoil it, why don't you? And this is really just continuing the episode. Why couldn't you just make it part two? If I told you that you could save only one of your three friends, who would you choose? Leah. Actually, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. Drago, we're gonna rescue them! Bakugan! Ah! Don't make me turn my attention on these pods and their precious content! My god, is this a kid's show or a teaser for the new Saw movie? So Dan suggests the final challenge is a Bakugan battle, and if he wins, Havoc releases the others. Surprisingly, Havoc is able to use Bakugan without a device. The theory I have on this is that it's because he's not from Earth. Be careful, Dan. There's definitely something bad about this guy. Um, he just threatened to kill Leah, Winton, and Shun. There's clearly something bad about him. So Havoc is beating Dan very badly, but Dan calls upon Lightning, and Lightning joins the battle, but Havoc is still too strong. This battle actually is really good, with so much stunning visuals and great action. And just like the title spoiled it, Drago and Treaders are able to fuse because a fusion core appears. They fuse by going back to ball mode and then rolling them on it. Wait, since they retract it, doesn't that mean they lost? Ah, uh, well... Drago X Treaderous is finally in the show and easily defeats Fang Zora X Mantanoid. Havoc leaves, but clearly this is not over as he has more plans for Dan in the future. My ultimate show has found a star in Dan Kuzo. <laughs> so that was episode 23 of Armored Alliance. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This episode was a great formal introduction of our main villain to the main characters. Finally, we got to move the plot point of this season forward more, and we got some very lighthearted scenes as well as great action. We see a lot more from Havoc, and this was mainly an episode to get us to soften up to his role as the main villain for this season. Dan Petra and the JVAC, I totally murdered that name, really does an outstanding job giving off the crazy maniac character really well, and I can see Havoc doing greater things this season. We also got a look at Dragonoid X Treaderous now in the show, and that was pretty cool. Now I just gotta find it for my collection. So, I'm giving this episode a Baku good. This is the pinnacle of mayhem and destruction! 
thank you for watching this review of Armored Alliance. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and that was Bakugan. Bye!